The state has rested its case in the hazing trial in BGSU student Stone Foltz's death. Right now, the prosecution and the defense are delivering closing arguments. Ariel Onstop stepped out of the courtroom and joins us now live. Ariel, what did the state have to say today? Melissa, the state ended its closing arguments with these words. If you want to join Pike, you have to do Pike things. Stone Foltz wanted to be a Pike. He did Pike things and now he's dead. And as I was leaving the courtroom, the defense attorney was pushing back on this language, calling it buzzwords. He was saying that Jacob Krim never forced Stone Foltz to drink and no evidence shows that he ever did so as well. Step by step in their closing arguments, the state laid out its case for why they believe Jacob Krim and Troy Hendrickson are guilty. They laid out the charges each of these two men face as it relates to Stone Foltz's death. Now, I want to take a look at some of those because these charges are serious. The charges include misdemeanors of hazing and failure to comply with underage drinking laws. Henriksen and Corinne also facing involuntary manslaughter, the most serious charge, and reckless homicide. Crin faces two counts of involuntary manslaughter, one as a result of felonious assault and the other as a result of hazing. The assistant prosecutor pointed to how Dr. Gregory Parks testified coercion doesn't have to be forceful. It can be subtle and psychological. She argued Crin caused Stone's death by handing him that bottle of alcohol. She argued the danger was foreseeable and yet Crin left Stone ultimately to go to the bars. So things are supposed to stay with their littles because they know how dangerous it is. And at the very least, you need to find someone to take care of them. And how do we know that uh, Jacob Crin didn't do that? How do we know that he didn't stay with his little? How do we know that he didn't leave anybody else to take care of his little? Look at his own words. Now, one thing that Jacob Krin's defense attorney, Samuel Shemansky, was pushing back against as well was this idea that it's a crime to leave someone. He says it's not a crime and that even Scotty Steck, Stone Foltz's friend who also dropped him off that night, believed Stone was okay, just like Jacob Krin. Now, throughout this testimony, both Stone Foltz's parents, as well as Jacob Krin and Troy Henriksen's family members have been sitting on the front rows of their respective sides of the courtroom listening intently. Stone's mother they're often shaking her head throughout the defense's closing arguments. I'm going to go back into the courtroom and I'll continue to keep you updated. Coming up at six, we're going to have more on the state's specific arguments as it relates to Troy Henriksen. Reporting live, I'm Ariel Onstott, WTOL 11.